G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. And in today's video, we're gonna have a little little chat, I guess, about the current race for this year's Wooden Spoon. Personally, I don't think I can recall so much chat about the Wooden Spoon race, particularly this early in the season, ever before. And I'm trying to work out why exactly that is. Is it because I'm an Eagles fan and therefore I'm more invested in uh, the race for the Wooden Spoon and potentially pick one? Is it because of the greater exposure of the draft in recent years, you know, particularly over the last five years, I'd say? The average footy fan definitely has a better grasp on the value of draft day and the importance of hard draft picks to build your list. There's probably a little bit of that, but certainly a large factor in that is that we've got this uber talented number one prospect in Harley Reid, who apparently is considered, you know, the, the greatest number one prospect ever, certainly in terms of being ready to play AFL pretty much now. In fact, you know, you could make the case last year he was almost AFL ready. I've done a video talking about Harley Reid and how good he could potentially be uh, previously, a few weeks back when I was in America. So today's video is more about looking at the teams that could potentially win the wooden spoon at the end of the year. And to be honest, there's three teams who are certainly a good chance for it. There's two in particular that seem super likely, but uh, you have to consider North Melbourne as well as an outside chance. So I'm talking about Hawthorne, West Coast, and North Melbourne as being chances to win the wooden spoon this year. All three sides of going into this season approached uh, the, you know, the list management side of things and the off-season quite differently. You've got Hawthorne who traded out a heap of experience. They traded out Mitchell, O'Meara, and Jack Gunston, three players that were maybe not A-graders by any stretch. Gunston certainly in the twilight of his career, but certainly some of their better performers on that list, they willingly let them go. And to be honest, in terms of the draft capital they got back, it wasn't too much of a return on that investment. So it was a bit of a head-scratching move. They also got rid of McAvoy, Shields, and Hardigan and brought in Amon, uh, Lloyd Meek and Cooper Stevens as well. So a lot of experience going out and not for the benefit of too much draft capital, it has to be said. So to be honest, the, the tanking theory about Hawthorne potentially lining up for pick one in this year's draft started as early as about October last season. Were they deliberately shedding experience to, to put themselves in the prime position to land this kid called Harley Reid in 12 months time? Potentially, I'll leave that up to you to come up with a theory, but for me, it's hard to get my head around the obvious benefit other than draft picks this year as to why Hawthorne would willingly cut their list so hard. We've seen the model of you know Melbourne in the past, and we've seen what happened to the expansion clubs when they didn't have enough experience. It's a dangerous game to play. West Coast, on the other hand, um, you know, were already bad last year, finishing second last, and you feel like in most other years, they would be the clear wooden spoon on winning just two games. If you win just two games and avoid the wooden spoon, that's crazy. But there was the injury excuse last year, and to some extent it was valid, although they still would have sucked anyway. But in terms of, you know, off-season moves and, and pushing towards a rebuild, comparatively, they were a lot more com a conservative than Hawthorne with just Kennedy and Redden retiring. They took their five draft picks and they were good draft picks as well, high selections. But by comparison, it was a team that felt that keeping on the experience and backing players to return from injury would be better for the development in the long term, I suppose. So trying to incorporate a new game plan, a new game style that was more modern and conducive to winning games in the short term. I suppose the Eagles thought it would be better to have more experienced veterans guide that transition through and obviously that's blown up in their faces with you know an injury list that is potentially even as bad as last season north the third outside contender for the wooden spoon this year um you know at two and oh earlier this year when they just knocked off the eagles in round one in a game that was actually a reasonable quality this was before the eagles injury list really took a hold of them then a win in perth against Fremantle. uh Fremantle obviously finished fifth last year things were looking up whether or not they were a genuine finals contender at the time it was a huge improvement from last season they went into this season with a new coach Coach Alastair Clarkson, you know, a long history of taking high picks, right? So in theory, their rebuild should just about be winding up. They've added some experience in Logan Tucker. They also had picks two and three in the draft and got Sheasel and Wardlaw. So they had every reason to believe North Melbourne would go into this season hoping to finish higher up the ladder as possible. Instead, what's happened is that they've fallen in on themselves, have lost seven of their last seven games, and unfortunately are still a chance for the wooden spoon. Personally, I don't think they're a realistic chance, but we'll get into who is the most likely to win the wooden. Personally, I don't think they're a realistic chance for the wooden spoon, but personally, I don't think they're a realistic chance to get the wooden spoon, but in the next part of this video, we'll talk about who is the most likely to get it. So the timing of this video comes in light of the upcoming game between Hawthorne and West Coast. They're calling it the Harley Reid Cup when the Eagles travel down to Tasmania. And to be honest, I have a lot of discomfort trying to predict who's going to win this game. I've said, you know, in videos throughout this week, I think Hawthorne's best has been better than West Coast. And I think the Eagles' worst has been worse than Hawthorne's. 
but somehow Hawthorne sit lower than us on the ladder. And I'm trying not to be cynical because there's been weeks recently where the Eagles, you know, for instance, that loss against Carlton, you lose by 108 points. Oh, the Eagles are probably going to finish this round on the bottom of the ladder. But Hawthorne have found ways to just nudge below us on percentage. Is that part of the conspiracy to, to you know, potentially get the mid-season number one pick as well? Want to stay just below West Coast? To be honest, I don't think any club has that much control over their percentage. And I certainly don't think Hawthorne have tanked late in games to try and get their percentage down. But I couldn't help but notice that's weird. So to be honest, going into this game with the Eagles' current injury list and to be honest, the terrible form, the boys look tired, um, and Hawthorne, who have had you know a patch of some reasonable form in the middle of the year, kind of faded late in games, in particular against Melbourne. We saw a patch in that Melbourne game where I thought Hawthorne looked very, very impressive and they fell away, and that's understandable for a young side. But going into this game, I think they have a bit more capacity, a bit more ability, and probably more confidence than the Eagles do at the moment. So to be honest, every fiber of my being thinks Hawthorne win this game. But there is this cynical part of me that thinks that Hawthorne, they're a smart operation. They're clearly not afraid to take risks. There is a part of me that think Hawthorne are going to throw this game somehow. Let me phrase it this way. If Hawthorne do lose this game, then I think they are clearly tanking. So much of this conversation of who is going to win this wooden spoon does hinge on this weekend. It is an eight-point game. Let's go into each team's uh, fixture and run home because this is critical in assessing who might win the wooden spoon. So we'll start with Hawthorne, and I've broken all the remaining games down into segments of winnable games, games where they have a slight chance of winning, and games that they're pretty much no chance of winning. So if we start off with Hawthorne, in my opinion, they've got four winnable games left this year. They've got the Eagles in Tasmania this week, they've got the Giants in Sydney, they've got North Melbourne at Marvel, and in the final round of the year, they've got Fremantle at the MCG. Now, Fremantle may or may not be, you know, back to some sort of form by then, but if they're late in the season, I feel like anything could happen if they're out of the finals race. Then there's some games where I give them a slight chance. The Suns away, although that does seem unlikely on current form. The Blues at the G, because the Blues are so unreliable sometimes. Uh, the Tigers at the MCG and the Dogs in Tassie. I think they beat the Dogs in Tassie not that long ago. By comparison, let's look at West Coast run home, and to me, it is a lot more daunting. Uh, they've got two winnable games in my estimation. They've obviously got the Hawks game in Tasmania this weekend, and then later in the year they've got an Optus game against North Melbourne, and who knows what the form lines will be back then. The th there's three games the Eagles have a slight chance of winning. They've got Essendon in Perth, they've got Richmond in Perth, and the Derby later in the year as well. And to be honest, on current form, I give them almost no chance as well. But you factor in last year, the two games they won were against Essendon and Collingwood of all teams. So random wins like that can happen, particularly in Perth. I included North Melbourne in this analysis just to give a good indication of how I don't think they're a realistic chance of winning the wooden spoon. Their winnable games, uh, there's a lot more of them. They've got the Giants in Tassie, the Hawks at the MCG, the Hawks at Marvel, the Eagles in Perth, the Tigers at the G, and the Suns down in Tasmania. So that's five games where they could realistically win. The slight chance games, again, Essendon, they've got them twice. At the moment, Essendon is a far better side than North Melbourne, but Essendon do tend to fade away in later in season, so perhaps I'm being cynical, but I wouldn't say there's no chance North win that. This weekend as well could be a potentially big game for them, considering that Sydney is so out of form that at Marvel Stadium, North are a chance this week. So to summarize that point, I would say that even though North Melbourne are playing horrible footy, I think they've demonstrated they're clearly better than Hawthorne and West Coast, and their run home with particularly a couple of games in Tasmania, I think they should be pretty safe. So with that in mind, the Eagles probably have the hardest fixture going into the last part of the season, or at least part of it is that I think Hawthorne have more of an ability to bob up and win random games than West Coast do right now. The West Coast injury situation is a, a clear elephant in the room that it's worth looking at as well. So I've broken down what players are likely to return for West Coast over the second half of the season. So in the next couple of weeks, we've got Hearn, Yo, Noah Long, Bazo, Hewitt, Virgil and uh, also a young fellow called Jack Williams potentially coming back into the side or at least being available. So the problem with that is that Hearn and Yo are clear best 22 players. Yo in particular has also been injury prone as well. So I don't know how much he's going to improve the side in the short term. And the other guys are just young prospects. So as an Eagles fan, I'm looking at that getting excited that we're going to blood some youth. But is that going to improve our best 22? I think it would slightly, but not by much. Over the next six weeks is where the Eagles get some uh, genuinely impactful players back available. So Sam Petrevsky, Seaton, Luke Shuey, Darling, and McGovern. So if all of those players come back and contribute, I do think the Eagles get significantly better. But that is still six weeks away. Then there's some real heavy hitters that I mean, unfortunately we are going to see, you know, potentially round 18 or 19 or potentially not at all in Nick Natanui, Liam Ryan, Tom Cole, and Jamie Cripps. 
So that gives you a, an idea as to what quality is likely to come back into this West Coast side. But we did see last year, if you recall, a lot of experienced players come back into the side and the Eagles somehow got worse because the conditioning wasn't there. I'd like to think that this time around, we'll get it right, but there's no guarantee. By comparison, Hawthorne and North Melbourne are a little bit more healthy. North do have their injuries in terms of, you know, real important players. Luke Davis Uniac is out for three to five, I think. Charlie Combin started the year in the side. He's out for eight to 10. And Tristan Cherry, I think, is out for two to four weeks still too. So in terms of their best 22 quality, LDU is a big loss, but generally speaking, I think they're a bit more equipped to deal with the injuries than West Coast are. By comparison, Hawthorne have probably one of the best injury lists in the league right now. Unfortunately, two of them have bobbed up this week in line for a game with West Coast. What a coincidence. GF and Ward are both TBCs at the moment, but I'm not suggesting there's any foul play there. I seriously doubt that a club is faking injuries. My general point there is just that Hawthorne have a more availability at the moment. I saw an interesting stat today that had the respective injury lists of games experience lost by each team. Hawthorne's uh, was the best in the league and, and West Coast was the worst in the league. There was almost the same amount of games experience on West Coast injury list than on Hawthorne's entire list. So all of this to me is adding up to the fact that Hawthorne should be able to stave off the wooden spoon better than West Coast here. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is because I feel very strongly that is the case. And if Hawthorne have engineered this a little bit to set themselves up for the wooden spoon this year, God, they must be frustrated that West Coast exists. What are the odds of a team being worse than Hawthorne this year? I think the number one pick will mean different things to these different clubs as well. Hawthorne and North Melbourne probably both in the same boat where their rebuilds have maybe not finished, maybe North should have finished, Hawthorne are probably still adding the finishing touches. But what Hawthorne don't have, and perhaps North Melbourne see this in the same way, is that real Dustin Martin potential top line talent. And of course, West Coast don't have that either. But for Hawthorne and North Melbourne, if either of them got pick one, you'd imagine they'd keep it. For West Coast, I think they will look at this pick one differently. And that's certainly how I see it as a fan. Yes, it'd be great to have, you know, one top liner in Harley Reid, but for me, I think the prospect of potentially receiving trade offers for pick one is more tempting than Harley Reid himself. And the reasons for that are numerous, I guess, because uh, you don't want to put too much stock into one player. It's riskier. And there's the elephant in the room that, you know, these top line Victorian kids, you know, in fact, South Australian kids as well, players drafted in the top part of the draft are less likely to stay at home. And that's why you see some of the best talent in the league getting overlooked for that reason. I think of Harry Sheasel as an example. In my opinion, probably should have gone pick one or two. And I said that at the time too. I believe that's why West Coast traded away that pick to get two later prospects who are more likely to stay at the club. And I just think that's an ongoing issue for interstate clubs. And it's actually not just interstate clubs. We saw with Jason Horn Francis, that happened in reverse. The point being is, I don't think West Coast is super likely to take Harley Reid, but if we potentially get a trade of three first rounders, then I think that will accelerate our rebuild and that's worth its weight in gold. But anyway, food for thought. I think it's uh, one of the more interesting wooden spoon races we've seen in a long time. And the fact that we're talking about this in uh, at the conclusion of round nine of the AFL season, it really speaks to the fact that there's a lot of value with pick one this year. It's a particularly strong draft. And naturally as an Eagles fan, I'm already looking at the draft because there's not a whole lot else to look forward to. Anyway, guys, let me know your comments and thoughts on everything I've said in this video. Who's your prediction for the wooden spoon who's your prediction for hawthorne west coast this week um, it is going to be a very interesting contest it's going to be on at 4 a.m here in the uk uh, straight after a saturday night we'll see maybe i'll still be up who knows but anyway appreciate all the support i appreciate you guys watching the videos hope you're enjoying the content and i'll see you in the next one cheers